Hey, what's up DIYers, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking boats today and we've got an Alpha One Gen 1 Mercruiser Outdrive. This is part two of the full bellows replacement project. Let's get started. Here we are DIYers outside of the boat and this is my grandma's 1989 glass port and it has an Alpha One Gen 1 strapped to the tail. We're doing a full bellows and shift cable replacement. And again, this is part two. However, scrolling above right now is part one. It will bring you up to speed where we are right now. If you have not checked that out, definitely check that out and then come right back here and we'll continue the project. As we make our way to the back of the boat, I'm using the internal portion of the garage plywood, a few nails sticking through as a unique pegboard. However, again, Alpha One Gen 1, and you will notice our outdrive has been fully removed down below in the comment section as well as description section, is a video link on how to properly and safely remove your outdrive from the bell housing, gimbal ring, and transom assembly, which as shown here is still connected to the boat. However, let's go down below. And right here, we didn't pay much attention to this in video one. We did reference it when the actual shift cable slide was on just to show you how it works. However, we will begin with this part in part two video. And this bottom tab here is again what assists in the movement of that shift cable slide and in return allows the engine to move through forward, neutral, and reverse and back and forth, etc. However, underneath here is an oil seal and a gasket. And we have a small flathead screw. Go ahead and clean it up just a little bit and we are going to remove this top portion. And we're doing that now because the bell housing is still connected to the gimbal ring and transom. And it will be easier to remove this now as opposed to getting this gimbal bearing completely off and trying to struggle with removing that screw. I have now repositioned the camera and DIYers. I recommend taking a few photos prior to loosening and removing this screw because you want to document and have a photo of the orientation of how this goes back on to ensure that the bottom tab here will properly align itself inside the shift cable slide as well as the very bottom portion down here, let me shift the camera down, you have a slot down here, which is for your shift crank that is installed on your upper unit or outdrive when it's all put back together, slides into. So again, photos go a long way. You may need to spray this with PV Blaster. Just be very careful. If your U-joint bellows failed in any way and allowed water inside the cavity, you might have corrosion and rust in here. However, ours looks pretty decent. It's well greased, so we don't think there was too much water in this area, which is nice. But again, do your best not to strip this as you remove it. If you are having trouble loosening this, go ahead and grab a hammer and carefully tap the base end of your screwdriver as you sound simultaneously turn the screw counterclockwise to loosen. Yep, it's very tough. Wow. There we go, it's moving. And apply some very friendly inward pressure as you turn that screw counterclockwise. And I'm doing my best not to get in your way and give you a good view of it. There we go. Let me scroll in. And we are making progress. The screw is coming out. And just a quick recap of how this shaft works in correlation with the shift cable slide that goes over this portion. Right now, if I hold this part in this position and go down below, the slot is in the forward position. As I move it inward, the lower slot is now in neutral. And if I shift this all the way in toward the hull of the boat or the transom, the lower slot is now in the reverse position. So again, you just wanna become familiar with how this works before you take everything apart. As you just saw, I loosened it to a point where I can pull the threaded pin out, as shown there. And from here, you can carefully lift up on this latch, as shown here, and pull it right out. There's the bottom side. I'll set that in a safe location as well. Next, I'll grab my pick tool from my local AutoZone, and I'll just carefully, without making any gouges or scoring, pull that washer out. There it is. Next, I shifted the camera back because I want to give you a full view of the shift cable shaft or rod as I shift this down and out. And again, the oil seal is right up here and you will notice it's going down and out of the bottom bushing here. And there it is, DORs. Check that out. We are going to keep this part. It does not look damaged one bit. We'll clean it up as the project goes on. But what I will do is I will put the washer back on as well as the top latch as shown here. And I will align the hole and re-secure that inner pin. And you may just have to carefully move the shaft back and forth until you can get it all the way pushed in and the thread aligned. Do not cross thread this and just carefully hand screw this in. This will allow you to not become unorganized or forget how it's put back together. And that is it, I'll set that aside. Now to a close-up view of where the rod or shaft came out of, there is the bushing, and on the underside or bottom side is the oil seal. Let's take a closer look at that. As you can see, there is the oil seal, and we are going to leave that installed for the time being. 
as well as our O-ring for our water tube. Now, in the event that your O-ring for your water tube has fallen off, no big deal, but if it's still intact, I recommend leaving it as is, and we will replace these at a later date on the workbench. What we'll do now is shift our attention to the bellows, both the U-joint bellow as shown here, as well as the exhaust bellow down below, and the water tube that feeds all the way up to the top right corner of the inner housing. And after we remove this entire bell housing from the transom and gimbal ring, again, that's when we'll take this bell housing inside to the workbench and start replacing the O-ring and seals and cleaning it all up. Next, we'll transition to port side, and I've got a very long Craftsman flathead screwdriver. And again, this is an Alpha 1 Gen 1. And back in the 80s, Mercruiser Engineering were kind enough to drill a hole right here. And from there, you can slide your very long flathead screwdriver all the way in, where it can then make contact with the inner worm gear clamp that is securing the exhaust bellow to the inner housing of the transom. And as you can see right there, and I'll try to give you a good view of it here. Inside now, and as you can see, the flathead screwdriver lines up perfectly with the screw on the worm gear clamp. However, that will depend on the person who serviced this last. And what I mean by that is in the event that the last person that serviced this engine and replaced the bellows and then put everything back together in the event that they did not put that worm gear clamp in line with that hole, you'll have a tough time aligning that screwdriver with the screw to remove it. Taking a step back, what I'll do is loosen that screw and loosen that clamp again on the exhaust bellow that secures to the transom housing. Next, I spent about 10 seconds and carefully pulled the bell housing outward toward me to widen the gap between the bell housing and the gimbal ring. Now we can come inside and see the U-joint assembly bellow, as you see here. And on the back side is a large worm gear clamp. And to the right of that, you can see the securing screw. Next, go ahead and grab that adjustable shaft screwdriver with the quarter inch and come in down below. And what you'll do is position that quarter inch socket on the worm gear screw and you will carefully begin unscrewing. We are now on and carefully again unscrewing that screw. And as you can see, the clamp itself is now loose. Check that out. Taking a step back, what I did next was carefully shift the bell housing and gimbal ring starboard side or to the right and that opens up this area right here to allow us to gain access to the internal water tube and check that water tube out. Badly damaged, dry rotted, and begging for replacement. And here's the tool I will be using down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link on where to purchase this. This will be awesome to shift right into that little gap to cut that water tube. However, if you don't have that tool and don't want to buy that tool, well, a standard utility knife will work as well. It may just take a few more seconds. I've now repositioned the camera and again shifting the bell housing as well as gimbal ring here, starboard side or to the right, just opens up this gap to give you better access to the water tube. And when it comes time to cut, I will have the bladed portion on top. And I'll do my best to give you a good view of this. I'm now on the water tube, and I'll apply some friendly pressure to cut through it. As you can see now, it is completely cut, which is what we wanted. Back up top and out front, and us Alpha 1 Gen 1 owners, we do not have an internal locking ring that secures the U-joint bellows to the actual bell housing. However, for all of you Alpha 1 Gen 2, as well as Bravo engines, you have an internal locking ring right here, and that has to be removed at this point to allow you to remove the U-joint bellow from the bell housing. And there is a specific tool for removing that internal locking ring, and down below in the comment section, as well as description section, will be a link to purchase that. And DIYers, I'll be honest, some people buy it, some don't. However, if you choose not to buy it and go about removing that internal locking ring with a few tools you have at home, just be extra careful not to gouge, scratch, or score the internal portion of the bell housing that the U-joint bellow mates with to create that oil tight and water tight seal to keep the water out of this entire U-joint assembly cavity. However, again, us Alpha 1 Gen 1 owners do not have that internal locking ring. In addition, I shifted the bell housing port side or to the left and you Alpha 1 Gen 2 as well as Bravo owners, you have an internal oil line in here and do not mistake that for your shift cable, which is right there. Again, it's an oil line and it feeds all the way up to your reservoir on your inboard portion of your engine. And at this point, you can use that tool that we just showed cutting the water tube or a utility knife and carefully cut that oil line. Just ensure you have something down below to catch the oil to alleviate a mess. That would not be good. I set the camera back and at this point, you can carefully pull on the bell housing carefully and keep in mind that even though we loosened up the clamps that secure the backside bellows to the transom or housing, the bellows themselves are secured and held on tight with bellow adhesive. And in most cases, that stuff is very strong and hard to break loose. So if you can reach your hand in here and pull on the bellows, great. 
but I'm going to show you what the shops do. They do not spend all day tugging on this bell housing to break that adhesive free on the inner housing. They grab a utility knife and cut right through the bellows. When you take your boat into the shop, they remove these bell housings super fast by again, just cutting right through them and pulling everything out. So I'll show you that now. And for this part of the project, I've grabbed my Craftsman utility knife and a fresh new blade. And again, all I'm going to do is kind of pull out on the rear portion of the bell housing, exposing the U-joint bellows and go in between two of the accordion lips and make a cut and I'll do my best to give you a good view of this as you see here and just cut all the way through now to the opposite side and again I'm just cutting the entire bellow at this point go ahead and carefully remove the coiled wire that's inside the u-joint bellow themselves and it just comes right out as shown here and yes you're gonna get a little dirty but that's okay sorry if my hands getting in your way and there is the ring that's inside the entire u-joint bellows very greasy and very dirty set that aside now to a close-up and again there is the u-joint bellow that we just cut and as you just saw it just took a few seconds down below is our exhaust bellow and to the left of that is the water tube that we just cut and again if that adhesive is giving you trouble and you are unable to pull the exhaust bellow off the inner housing even though you have already loosened the clamp well you might want to grab your utility knife and cut through that exhaust bellow as well and we are going to do that at this point in addition diys you may just want to cut from the get-go without loosening any of the clamps however we owed it to you to show you where the clamps were as well as where the screws are that secure or tighten the clamps and for you alpha gen 1 owners that little access hole for the exhaust bellow screw however again we're just going to cut that lower exhaust bellow with the utility knife next we'll pull out and carefully shift the bell housing port side and again grab your utility knife and it looks like our shift cable is already broken which is not a problem because we are going to replace it and in addition at this point we were going to snip that anyways after cutting the exhaust bellow however since it's already broken one less thing we have to snip and again pull this out and i'll just make my cut There we go. And we will pull this entire bell housing out and set it in a safe location. Now to a different camera angle and I've got a very fine tip flathead screwdriver. What I'm going to do is just carefully put it in between the bellows and housing and just kind of start loosening that adhesive and pushing the bellow off the housing that it secures to. And as you do this, just be careful again. You do not want to scratch or gouge the inner housing that the bellow itself mates with. That would lead to all kinds of trouble. And this is going pretty well. I'm just kind of again doing a full circle around and separating the bellow from the housing by breaking away that adhesive. And if I broke it all free, at this point, I can carefully pull that off of the housing. As shown here. And again, the clamp itself was loose, see that? I'll set that aside. Next, I reinserted that very long flathead Craftsman screwdriver in the machine hole in the transom because I wanted to show you a better view of how it connects to the inner screw and clamp that secures the exhaust bellow to the inner housing. And again, as we loosen this up, you can see the screw moving. Our clamp is loose. However, it's not going to come off easily because of that bellow adhesive. So what I'll need to do is take that screwdriver, go inside and break the bellow away from the housing as we did with the U-joint assembly up top. And DIYers, I am noticing a whole bunch of insulation inside the exhaust bellow, which is not good. And what that means is over the couple years it's been sitting, something got inside and created a home. So we'll need to clean that up as well. And I spent about three minutes and used that flathead screwdriver to again, separate the bellow from the inner housing. And from here, it's pretty loose. Just pull that off. And again, as you can see, our clamp itself was very loose, but the bellow adhesive on the rear side sometimes gives you trouble. Set that aside. And I will grab the grounding clip and the new bellows will come with a new grounding clip as well. Set that aside. Next, I'll pull the shift cable out a bit. And as you can see, the clamp itself has been loosened to a point where it can basically pull it all the way off. Set that aside. And you've got this securing lock here. And in most cases, it's pretty tough to get off. So all I'm going to do is transition back to my utility knife, grab the base end and just cut the bellow. And DIYers, there is the shift cable bellow. And again, I used the utility knife, cut all the way through it, made it much easier to remove. I didn't even have to remove this clamp. And no need to salvage this because the new shift cable and bellow assembly kit comes with a brand new clamp.
Now to another close up in DIYers. This is what I'm worried about. All that insulation inside my exhaust. And from what I can tell, there were no holes in the actual exhaust bellow. So unfortunately, we need to go back up top after we clean that exhaust portion out and figure out how critters got inside the exhaust. We were making progress. I have removed as much of that insulation that I can get a hold of and there was a lot. And unfortunately, it continues inward and up the exhaust pipe that is inside the inboard engine, or in other words, on the inner portion of the hull. And again, at this point, unfortunately, I know it's not clean and clear, so I have to clean that out because the last thing I want to do is get everything rebuilt and put back together and then start the engine with a clogged exhaust pipe. That would not be good. However, what we'll do now is direct our attention to the inner top portion of the housing where the rubber portion of the water tube or hose connects to the plastic portion of the water tube or hose. And just like the other clamps, you have a quarter inch screw that secures the worm clamp. And again, you can see how dry rotted that hose is not good and i got a new pair of gloves my other one started to rip and again just carefully align your quarter inch socket on the screw and in our case we're using that adjustable shaft and you can see how easy it loosens and in most cases this is not easy to remove from the plastic tube and the last thing you want to do is pull too hard or twist it it could actually lead to breaking the plastic tube and if you do that that's not good so with that said, back to the Craftsman utility knife and all I'm going to do is just carefully cut and weaken that connection. And at the same time, not applying too much pressure because I don't want the blade to sink through the hose and start gouging the plastic tube. That's not what I want. And back to the flathead screwdriver just to ensure that it's starting to separate. As shown there, back to the knife. As you can see, I'm making progress with the cut and you should just be able to pull this off. Again, just be careful. You do not want to break the inner plastic tube. Replacing that is a heartache if you're not planning on doing so. At this point, our entire bell housing, the water tube, the U-joint bellow, the exhaust bellow, and the shift cable bellow have been fully removed. And before we take that to the workbench and begin servicing it, we are going to clean up the entire inner portion of the housing here. And honestly, it's not that bad. As far as corrosion, there are a few areas of flaking and pitting, as you can see there, but for the most part, in pretty decent condition. And here is the Craftsman shop vac I'll be using. Point I'm done vacuuming. I spent about a minute and a half vacuuming. I inserted that hose as far into the exhaust system as possible, and surprisingly, quite a lot went in. So, and there we go. Now to the inside of the vacuum and not much and that's a good thing that's what we were hoping we believe that lump sum that we took out just a bit ago was the bulk of it and hopefully what's inside this vacuum right there is the last of it however again we are going to run an endoscope through the exhaust system and let's take a closer look inside coming inside to a close-up view of the internal exhaust pipe and not too much to show it goes in and it turns left and makes its way upward to the engine Back inside the boat at the inboard engine, we are going to come to the left side and go down below. And we are going to carefully maneuver ourselves in position where we can see the opposite end of that water tube. As you can see, it feeds through the cover there that is bolted in place to the transom. And it feeds through and connects to a rubber hose that's secured by a clamp. And in our case, again, Alpha 1 Gen 1 ours is very easily accessible for replacement. However, we will get to that shortly. I'm going to come to the opposite end. And that large hose right here that connects to the opposite end of the water tube feeds all the way up the back engine and to the side of the engine and goes past our carburetor and into the thermostat, which is right there. As you can see, it has a 90 degree elbow fitting that the hose is secured to and that part feeds into the thermostat. However, again, we will replace that shortly. Let's hop to the opposite side. Now to the opposite side of the engine, I want to show the exhaust pipe. As you can see, it feeds off the engine right here, loops over and goes into a quadruple clamped rubber fitting or hose and continues on down to an additional quadruple clamped hose shown here. Yeah, I'm going to grab my endoscope and go down below and insert the camera in the exhaust pipe to see if there's any additional debris inside that exhaust system. At this point, I've grabbed my endoscope and scrolling above right now is a video link on a full tutorial for this exact endoscope as well as a link on where to purchase this. Only about $60. It's got a 16 and a half foot snake and a pretty nice camera. 
Let's get this camera in position and see what's inside that exhaust. With the camera repositioned, I'm going to carefully push the shift cable housing in just to give you a better view of the exhaust fitting on the transom. And it'll scope in hand. I'm going to press and hold the on button. You can see it turn on and there is the camera with the light, which is awesome. And I'm going to feed this snake or cable inside the exhaust. And I am going to actually record this. And I am going to show you that video footage as opposed to this. However, I'm going to show you how I insert the snake in the exhaust. And again, we got 16 and a half feet of this snake or cable. And we are going to carefully insert it inside the exhaust hole. And you can see as I go inside, you can start picking up what the camera is seeing. And again, I'm going to just be looking for any additional debris. I'm going to make that turn and go upward. And again, I'll show you the footage that actually is filmed by this unit rather than the video on the camera. inside the boat and in relation to the inboard engine. Coming to the right side, there is our exhaust system and quadruple clamped rubber hose and into the other pipe and down below. And the connection point where the rubber hoses are, the lower portion is where we are right now. Back inside the boat and DIYers at this point, I feel very confident moving forward with the project as we have ensured that there's no additional debris or insulation in that exhaust pipe or system. Coming inside the transom and to the water tube, we are now going to remove the water tube. To do so, we have to get inside the boat and remove the back cover and bolts. Inside the boat at the inboard engine, we'll come to the left side and all the way to the back, we'll position the camera and get started on removing that water tube. I've got a 516 socket on an extension and I need to remove the hose first because without removing that hose, we can't actually access the top bolt. So again, we are going to loosen this up and that's pretty loose. Clamp is loose, as you can see here. And it might be a little tough because just by feeling the hose, the water tube itself goes all the way up to this point right here where my thumb is. So just kind of carefully pull it out. There we go. And I'll raise the camera just a bit. I'm going to shift this hose all the way up and over to get it out of the way. And there is the opposite end of the tube. Next, I've got the 716 socket on the ratchet and I'm going to loosen these bolts. And the bolts themselves just shy of an inch tall. And 
After you remove both screws, just carefully pull up and remove the cover, as you can see here. Here's a close-up of it. I'm now going to scroll in. What we'll do next is hop out of the boat, go to the opposite end, and push it in from the transom side. As you just saw, we broke it loose from the opposite side, and I'll pull this out just a bit. And from here, I need to cut away that bushing, because right now, the angle of the tube on the exterior portion inside the transom is positioned in a way that is impossible to pull through this hole. And as this bushing goes in, it gets larger in diameter, which also makes it extremely difficult to pull outward. So again, we're going to cut away this bushing. With the bushing cut, it makes it a lot easier to slide off of this hose, as you can see here. There's the bushing. From here, I can basically go back to the inner portion of the exterior transom and pull this tube through. Outside the boat, coming back inside the transom, and again, carefully remove your water tube. And DIYers, there it is. And inspecting this right now looks pretty good. Looks empty, nothing clogging it, no cracks, and I tried to buy a replacement water tube, but there's a back order on them. I'm not sure why. I wanted the OEM exact replacement part. So with that said, I'm going to clean this up and reuse it. Back inside the boat where we removed the cover for the water tube, and directly below that you'll see a hole, and that is where your U-joint shaft slides all the way through the rear hull and into the engine coupler. From here, we are going to direct our attention to the hose that we removed from the water tube. And again, it feeds all the way up here to a fitting. However, first, check your hose for any zip ties. As you can see, we have one here, which believe it or not, is the wiring for our trim limit and sender. So we are going to snip that. Now to the opposite side of the engine, here is our carburetor. And again, that hose feeds all the way up and to the side of the top portion of the engine and into an elbow fitting there and is secured by a clamp. In our case, 5 sixteenths, or you can try a flathead screwdriver and loosen that clamp. Camera is now positioned in front of the engine. And again, I'm just going to loosen up that clamp. Now to a close up of the hose. Again, here is the elbow fitting that it secures onto. Two things I recommend before yanking this hose off the fitting. Number one, carefully without cutting anything else in the process, make a cut in the hose where it secures onto the fitting. That is going to make it a lot easier to remove. And as you can see, I've cut all the way through and it can basically peel it up, which again makes it a lot easier to remove from the fitting. In addition, the second thing is coming midway, basically where it slides by the carburetor area, you have a small little loop or hook that the hose feeds into. And if you want to, you can remove that. However, in our case, we're just going to carefully shift the hose through that loop or hook and out without damaging it. Back to the front, what I'll do is just carefully peel the hose that I cut and push it off the elbow fitting. As you can see here, and up and out. Again, without damaging anything, I'll grab that clamp so it doesn't fall where I don't want it to. I'll set that aside and I'll carefully pull the hose through. And to a close up of that lower hook we were just talking about, just carefully pull the hose through it. And you'll notice on the tail end as well, the hose gets in a tight spot. So just carefully help it through any tight spots as you pull this up and out. And DIYers, that is a long hose, and our replacement hose is 44 inches, and yeah, it kind of looks like that. And real quick, another view of that looper hook. It's just secured on with a bolt, shown right there. But again, as you saw, you can carefully remove that hose without removing this hook. Outside the boat, and here's everything we just removed. Again, that long hose, and what I did was re-secure the clamps to them so I don't lose them. And what I'll do is I'll take everything inside, I'll clean up that old water tube, and install a new bushing, and prepare this to be reinstalled inside the boat. Taking a step back, we are now going to transition inside to the workbench. We're going to take that entire bell housing and all the parts that we have already removed inside again to the bench, where we will continue removing the remainder bellows and hose, and install all new parts. However, before leaving the back of the boat, I have bungeed up the trim rams, as shown here. Back inside at the Craftsman workstation and we'll continue the project. Closer look at the workbench and we've got our shift crank and that right there is this part right here. Check that out. In addition, our water tube. We'll hop up to the transom diagram. There's the water tube, the bushing, the cover, and the bolt. 
And again, shift bellow, exhaust bellow, water tube, U-joint bellow. I'll reposition the camera and begin removing the remainder parts. Camera is now repositioned. I'll start by just carefully removing the shift cable bellow and clamp that was already undone. And I recommend taking photos of how these clamps are positioned when securing the bellows, because as of right now, they are positioned to allow you the best access to the screw or bolt that secures the clamp, or in other words, tightens it and loosens it. And we will start with the exhaust bellow. And this clamp is on there pretty good. I actually had to remove the entire bolt and now it's loose. Next, coming inside again, just carefully grab a very fine tip flathead screwdriver and go in between the bellow itself as well as the housing and just kind of separate the two by breaking away the adhesive that was applied the last time these were installed, as you can see here. Again, be careful, you do not want to gouge or scrape the housing. Next, I will go in and remove the water tube. And again, the way these clamps are installed is for the best access, as you can see here. Clamp is loose, as you saw it just fall. Now this one's gonna be on there. I may have to use the utility knife and cut up from the bottom. I'm trying to give you a good view of actually cutting this hose. DORs, that was stuck on there pretty good. This is in bad shape. Check that out. Not good. Not good at all. And it's rock hard. Stiff as a board. Next, grab the clamp. Next, I need to come up top and remove the U-joint bellow. Next, to a close-up again, this is the large U-joint bellow. We need to remove that. And on the top side there, you can see the screw that will loosen up to remove that clamp. And back to the adjustable shaft with a quarter inch socket, if that works best for you, awesome. However, in our case, I think I can get to it with just a regular flathead screwdriver. And I'll just turn this to the side. And I don't think you can see the screw where you're at, but I'm on it right now. And I'm just going to loosen this up. Clamp is now loose. I'm going to carefully shift this to the upright position where we will now grab again that very fine tip flathead screwdriver and without causing any damage to the inner case where the new bellow will mate and create that watertight and oil tight seal, we are going to carefully separate the gasket. And as you see, it's coming out. We're separating in a pretty friendly manner. I'll give you a better view of it here. We're all the way around and there is the gasket first. as shown there. I'll give you a better view of that here shortly. To the back side, all I'll do now is separate the bellow from again the housing. And as you can see right here is the housing. And you'll go above the housing and ever so carefully separate it. There we go. From here I can carefully pull it off. very dirty. Next, I'll flip it to the opposite side. It's time to remove the shift cable fitting here. And in the previous video, we talked about this manufactured part number by Mercruiser. It is a long, deep socket specifically designed to remove this fitting from the bell housing. And as I mentioned, some people buy it, some don't, but I recommend purchasing it. Down below in the comment section, as well as description section, will be a link on where to purchase this. And this part right here, a three quarters inch socket goes over it. So go ahead and properly seat the tool. I've got a three quarters inch socket and I will just unscrew this fitting. And in the previous video, we did loosen it. And this is why, because when it gets to this point of the project, as you can see, it is extremely easy to unscrew. If we did not unscrew this earlier in the project, it would be very hard to remove that fitting with the bell housing not secured to the boat. So again, just a tip. And at this point, you can unscrew it by hand, remove the tool, and check that out. There is the fitting for the shift cable. And again, all of this will be brand new, as you can see here.
junk. That leaves us with the water tube o-ring here and again just like anything else do your best not to gouge or scratch anything while you remove this and as you can see that just comes off as shown there. Next down below here you've got one additional gasket and that again is the gasket that creates a watertight and oil tight seal at this very point with this shift crank or shaft through that hole and this operating in conjunction with your shift cable and I'll just remove that. There it goes. DOIs, there it is. At this point, there is a bushing inside here as well as inside here. We're going to leave those installed. However, we are going to clean up the inner portions of those. And DIYers, at this point, your entire bell housing is a hollow case. Taking a step back, a few things before we come to an end of part two. That little gasket we just removed, make sure you take photos to ensure that when it comes time to install the new one, you are properly positioning and inserting the new gasket or seal the right way. And to the water tube, again, we're going to keep that water tube, but install a brand new cover and bushing. Back to the bell housing where the O-ring came out of for the water tube that creates that watertight seal at that point, that'll be new. Down inside the bell housing where we just removed the shift cable fitting, we will clean everything up and install all brand new parts. Here's the old one. And here is the new one. Shift cable, housing, and fitting. Again, what we'll do is clean this all up and move on to part three. And DIYers scrolling above right now is a link to part three. Definitely check that out. It'll pick up right where we left off. From here, we hope this helped. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And we will follow the schematics to a T as well as our exact serial number.